Hello, my name is Ryan and welcome to my channel where I discuss Fantasy Formula 1. It is Friday, which means we have the FP1 and FP2 timings. So we're going to look at those and see what my team is likely to look like tomorrow when we get to the deadline stream. Announcing it now, tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, early morning, uh, I will be up doing a deadline stream. So please join me with a cup of coffee if you're here in Europe or I guess with an evening beverage if you are in the Americas, uh, because that will be a fun time as always, and that's where the team will be locked completely. And if you haven't seen a different announcement entirely, earlier this week I posted a video titled something like, oh, everything wrong with F1 Fantasy. That's not just a rant video. It actually has a very, very interesting and important um, bit of news in it, and that is that uh, FanAmp, uh FF Fantasy Rob, Greg, uh, all of those guys, they have made a semi-official F1 Fantasy survey, like end of season survey, that F1, the actual F1 Fantasy, will use at the end of the season to sort of pull together and, and see how successful uh, F1 Fantasy was. So if you want to leave your opinion on the game, do so in the description below. You have until the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to do so. It's really important that as many people as possible fill this out. Uh, it's backed by all of us content creators, and uh, it, it's basically the best way to improve this game for the future. And, uh, uh, well, I, you can watch the video. I'll leave a link in the video uh, down below as well that I posted earlier in the week if you want to hear my thoughts on it, what I think needs to be changed. Uh, but it, you don't even have to watch that video. Just fill in the survey. It takes like seven to ten minutes. And, uh, I mean, if you're watching this video, it means you've been playing F1 Fantasy, presumably, for the entire year. So, surely you can spend... 10 minutes doing that survey i wouldn't ask it of you if i didn't think it was important but i do think it's important so thank you so much let's get into my team selection for the las vegas grand prix so this was my team back in sao paulo running double uh mclaren driver triple mclaren right with yugi Noda, frank colapinto valtteri bottas and ferrari and i'm not going to discuss what happened in sao paulo i have an entire review video for that that i posted at the end of that grand prix but what is important then is, you know, this is what my team looks like. This is where my team is, is you know, stationed. Uh, I have that, you know, Yuki Tsunoda asset, which I really like, and I'm probably going to keep. I have Valtteri Bottas, which I don't like, but I might like a bit more, and I'll tell you why in a second. And then Franco Colapinto, who's obviously been, uh, I mean, the GOAT asset since he, he joined the game. Disappointing showing in Brazil, sure, but, I mean, you can't argue with these numbers beforehand. So, overall, I'm quite... I was quite pleased with my team going into this weekend. And then, as always, free practice comes and uh, completely screws it up. So, if you didn't see free practice, uh, Mercedes look fast, right? Mercedes look fast. And I haven't looked, you know, in depth at all the data yet on long run pace and the like. But I will be doing that tomorrow on the deadline stream. But seeing these numbers and Lewis being on top makes me want to get Mercedes in. Uh, and for as much as Mercedes has uh, screwed me over the course of the season, uh, they haven't screwed me that much. I've been more screwed by by other things, but Mercedes haven't been fantastic, and I've, I've missed their highs, and I've been there for some of their lows. So this looks like it could be the race for Mercedes. Now, why is this? Maybe it's the temperature. We've seen this multiple times throughout the season that Mercedes and Ferrari are sort of the opposite, that Ferrari work really well in, in warm weather, whereas Mercedes work really well when it's colder. We saw this in Silverstone. We saw this in Singapore. We saw this in Mexico. Like, Well, maybe not Mexico because I don't know the temperature there, but you get what I'm saying. What's important is that the when we see someone being at top of the practice standings, they have usually been relatively good and especially since we're not expecting a change in the weather like this is what free practice do this is what we're, we think is going to happen in qualifying right now granted it is a very 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 tiny margin of course to uh Landon Norris but I don't think I'm getting rid of Landon Norris anyway uh because you know and I'll show you why right Say I wanted to go full Mercedes. We're talking Hamilton, Russell, and the Mercedes constructor assets. Because if you're sitting like me, you're watching FP1, FP2, thinking, I need to get Mercedes in, you should prioritize getting the constructor in for Mercedes first, and then their drivers. So, obviously, it would have to be this first. 
And then, if I then decide to like, oh, I want to go all in and go for triple Mercedes, suddenly I sit here with 6.1 million in the bank and nothing to do with it because I only have these three free transfers. It's like, yes, I could go and upgrade someone like a Valtteri Bottas, mm -hmm. but Valtteri Bottas has a five-place grid penalty, meaning he's likely to start P20 and meaning he's likely to be the show of this race. And I mean, look at what show has done for the past couple of races, right? This is what happens when show starts P20 every race. I think this could be what Bottas is on for, like, you know, a seven-pointer, a six-pointer, something like that. So I don't even necessarily want to get rid of Valtteri Bottas. Maybe the upgrade would be Yuki Tsunoda, so like a Kevin Magnussen. But even then, it feels like I'm leaving a lot of budget here. And, and again, I wouldn't use a minus 10 hit to get Yuki Tsunoda out for Kevin Magnussen. I don't have my wild card. So in any case, like in any situation, I am not getting triple Mercedes because I can't use the budget to upgrade. So for that reason, and because Mercedes assets are cheaper than Piastri, than Ferrari, I am keeping Lando Norris. I, that's just, I, I'm keeping Lando Norris. McLaren are too good. Surely he has to perform at some point. I'm not saying he's been atrocious, but he hasn't lived up to his potential this year. And so a likely move for me, if I want to go for the constructor, or we want to go for the Mercedes punt, right, is to get rid of Ferrari and get uh, Hamilton and Mercedes in there. And then with this 1.4 million, I could upgrade Yuki Tsunoda to a Nico Hulkenberg. That's the highest I could go, uh, which feels like a, a decent upgrade. I don't hate that uh, at all, uh, but I could also see myself just rolling an another transfer and staying on three. The reason I would you know, stay on one free transfer, so I have three free transfers in Qatar. Again, Qatar is a sprint weekend, meaning Qatar is uh, way more valuable right, than Las Vegas because there's more points to gain. And if it's warm there, which I guess it's going to be, I think Mercedes might be bad. And if Mercedes are bad, I would want to get Ferrari back in. And if I use that third transfer to get Nico Hulkenberg in, I can't get Ferrari back in. Actually, I could, but with Carl Sainz. I can't get Leclerc back in. So maybe the Nico Hulkenberg is fine. Maybe the Nico Hulkenberg trade is fine, but this would, this would be what I would then swap to in, in Qatar. Uh, but I would be priced out of, uh, of Leclerc unless... I get massive budget gains, and, and Ferrari has an atrocious, atrocious time in um, in in Vegas, which I don't think they will have. By the way, I mean before this FP1, FP2, I was thinking if I would go more in the Ferrari direction, right? But I mean Ferrari just doesn't like the cold weather and hasn't really, you know, they they they've been, you know, slightly off the pace. Three tenths here, uh, five tenths here. But that's when we see that sort of gap, I, I think just Mercedes is going to outperform Ferrari uh, this this time, right? Uh, as for just like, oh, do you go for the do you sell the McLaren instead and keep Ferrari? I don't think so, simply because of Lando. And I do think that when we get to the race pace type of deal, and you know, we see this every time in qualifying, McLaren are close. Maybe they are on top of the practice standings, but when we get to the race. And we start putting some some laps on the tires, and the, the fuel starts going down. The McLaren gets faster and faster and faster uh, compared to the other cars over the course of the race. Uh, another interesting thing is like Red Bull are 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 washed, right? Uh, I saw some people before free practice saying, "Oh, we should bet on Max Verstappen." I don't think Max Verstappen is winning unless Lando crashes. I don't think uh, Max is um, winning the championship here. We'll see; it's possible, uh, but. The Red Bull looks really bad, and apparently there's news that he brought they, they brought the wrong rear wing. I don't know how that happened, but or if it's true, but I saw Marco talk about it, and if Marco is slandering the team, then then something's happened, right? So, with regards to the free practice results, that's what I'm likely to do. Now, even if free practice three comes around and we get some more race pace. Uh, data right long run data and it looks like the mercedes aren't as good as we thought my likely move this week is to get rid of piastri right i still i still think that piastri is due to not get papaya ruled meaning that if lando's p lando's p2 and piastri's p1 i do think they will switch it especially if red bull and max are having a really bad time uh down outside the points or if if they're out of the race 
because that technically, you know, Lando's uh, or and McLaren's driver championships dreams are real. So for that reason, I'm not looking to keep Piastri. It's not looking like McLaren are dominant this weekend, uh, at least not yet. So for that reason, I'm likely to get rid of Piastri. Now, if Mercedes for some reason look bad and I don't want them tomorrow, the likely move then would be Charles Leclerc. That would be, leave me on exactly zero in my budget. I would just keep Yuki Tsunoda. I would burn a transfer and go to Qatar with three free transfers. So the sort of two options I have, I'm almost always in every scenario selling Piastri. And I'm almost always in every scenario keeping Lando. Just because selling Lando doesn't make sense for me, especially not when he's still up there and like, you know, he, he's just behind the, the, uh, the Mercedes here. They, this is not a lot, and he could definitely go from P2 here and, and win over over a Mercedes, or over a Mercedes uh, once that race pace uh, of the McLaren comes into play. So I'm very likely to keep Landon Norris, very likely to keep him, him as my 2x. Uh, let's go and discuss some more intricate strategies for this end of season run. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by more intricate strategies, right? And it's something I want to briefly mention here at the end of this video that I've talked about if you don't watch my live streams. And I've talked about this a lot in the last couple of live streams. I'm sitting here giving you tips on what I'm doing. But crucially, I'm not chasing anyone. I guess I'm kind of chasing top 10 to 10k, but I think I can reach top 10k by just playing optimally, right? And I say optimally, Usually when I play optimally, it goes horrible. But with that being said, I'm just going to keep Landon Norris, right? Land uh, Landon Norris is, is, is the basic pick. I know a lot of people have him as their 2x. I'm going to keep it that way because I do think he's most likely to win. Now, that being said, especially with regards to Landon Norris and McLaren, if you are chasing someone, if you are in a mini league that you want to win, and you're P2 or P3, and you're trying to get to that top spot, you only have three races to do it. And the way you get points, the way you chase someone, especially if you have like a 100-point gap, the only way, the only way that you're going to win is if you have assets that they don't and their assets DNF. That is actually the strategy you need to go for. Maybe you can get an upside pick that works well. Fantastic. But you need to be differential in your picks. I don't need to. I'm just going to play my game, try and get top 10k overall, and call it a day. The mini leagues I'm in, I'm, I'm fine, you know. There's no one I particularly want to play differential to. But if you're sitting P2 and the guy above you in your mini league has Landon Norris 2x, now is the time to go differential. Someone like a Lewis Hamilton, right? Put the 2x on Lewis Hamilton. Maybe even sell Lando and keep Piastri if you have if you were on my team and have Landon Norris Piastri. Just switch it up, right? And I, I think that is the, the most important takeaway that you should take from this video is that you could go and do similar moves to me, but if you're chasing a rank, chasing a certain someone, then you're not going to reach that by playing like everyone else. And you don't, I'm not saying like put the 2x on Yuki Sonoda or put the 2x on Hulkenberg. That's not going to go your way. But again, like putting your 2x on Hamilton or putting your 2x on Leclerc small changes like that could really boost you alongside with not having the assets that are above you even though, like for someone like a franken colapinto like everyone has them if you downgrade to you know let's say you do let's say you do this let's say you have the wild card for some reason still but but let's say you can get to something like this, like this and then you can just go and upgrade here to to nico like, just going without Frank Colapinto and betting on him to crash could be a massive swing in your favor, right? Because not, like, everyone has Frank Colapinto, right? So if you can get off Frank Colapinto, that can be a massive differential. Uh, now, I'm happy to keep Frank Colapinto. I think he's a great asset for the, for the price. He is, right? I'm happy to keep Valtteri Bottas over Shogun Yu this week. And I think if you've been watching this far, I think a good tip from me to you is that if you're sitting on Shogun Yu and not Valtteri Bottas, I think this is the weekend 
where you switch, right? I think you go for Valtteri Bottas and use the money to upgrade someone else. Getting someone like a Yuki Sonoda instead of an Alex Albon or, or getting someone like a Nico Hulkenberg instead of a Yuki Sonoda. Similar things. Like, that's what you could do from going down from, from show to a Bottas. So if you only have show and you don't have Bottas, I think I would switch it this week just because of Bottas' five-place grid penalty. But I digress. All of this toy, like, I, I just think it's, it's really important to, for you to look at what your goal is now. You only have three weekends. You know, one of them is a sprint, sure. Uh, but as well, if you have any chips, right? I don't have any chips remaining. And if you have any chips remaining and you're wondering what to do with them, leave a comment down below or join me and ask them uh, in the deadline stream tomorrow. Because these chips that you have remaining are also massive differentials. A lot of people have used all their chips. I've used all my chips. Maybe the person above you in your mini league has used all their chips. If you're sitting there on a 3x, I mean, you obviously use it in Qatar. But that's where you could get some some uh, some big gains as well. So you need to look at where do you want to be, set a goal, set a target, and work towards that. If that is by playing optimally by having Lando 2x, such as me, I feel like I could probably gain 117 places by playing with, with Lando, right? Then go for that. But if you are further behind or chasing someone in a specific mini league, play differential. Not super differential, but just differential enough to where you can actually mathematically make up that difference. And I think that's all I wanted to discuss. I'll see you tomorrow in the deadline stream. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please do. Uh, don't forget to like the video. And again, if you have any questions regarding your team, leave them in the comment below or join me for the deadline stream tomorrow morning. Do not miss it two hours before the deadline. So in 14 hours time, well, when this video goes live, it's probably going to be like 12 hours time. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Oh, and don't forget to do the survey. Link, link, link below. Do, do the survey.